Good morning, friends. Good morning, America. Welcome to Pray for America 714. 14 minutes of prayer for America, for our president, and for the election at 7 a.m. And it's it's true that at one point or at many points we we thought this whole thing would have been over by now, that all all the smoke would have cleared. And that President Trump would have been soundly reelected, but we are in the midst of really a national crisis because there is um, a very strong accusation, and many many people believe it, and a lot of evidence of uh, mischief. Good morning, Karen. Good to see you this morning. I want to do a shout out this morning bright and early to my daughter-in-law, Brittany Jarvis Morgan. Brittany, B. LaBelle, happy birthday, B. Out there in Colorado Springs, she, she won't be watching this because it's 5 a.m. there, and, <clears throat> well, they just don't get up at 5 a.m. and turn on Facebook. <laughs> but you might see it later, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate all of you that come on the John Morgan Show and join me in prayer and join me for a little frivolity in the afternoon. What a joy it is to gather together. And uh, I just want to encourage everyone to to share these times with your friends and uh, let's see if we can get this little program to grow because more prayer means more power. More prayer means more effect because the effectual, the fervent prayers of a righteous man avail much, accomplish much. Not in my not in my strength. And I'm not righteous in my own stead. I am righteous in Jesus because he said that he gave us his righteousness as a gift in Romans chapter 4. And it is the most profound exchange. He they call it the great exchange. He took our sin upon himself so that we could be forgiven and he could come and reside inside of us. And that's what it means to be born again. It's a spiritual reality, something that happens in the invisible realm, but as you cannot see the wind, but you can feel it and you can see its effects on the leaves of a tree. When the Holy Spirit becomes one with you and you become born again, you may not be able to see it happen, but you can feel its effects. It changes everything. The Bible says, old things pass away, and behold, all things become you new. You become a new creation, a new creature. It's even more so than a caterpillar becoming a butterfly, even though that's a pretty good analogy, a metamorphosis, if you will. Well, butterflies... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's let's join together. Ed Reagan, good to see you, my friend. Julie, I appreciate you. Mame, Carol, appreciate you. Beth, good to see you this morning. Hello, everyone. What a joy. Our little coffee group. And it's been fun. We've been we've been growing slowly. Mark Williams was on the show yesterday. A good friend. And uh God has been gracious to us, very kind. Let's, let's go before the throne of heaven and cry out to him, knowing that he hears us, knowing that he is drawn to us. The Bible says that he resists the proud, but he's drawn to the humble. And so when we obey 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and Jesus said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Humble themselves and pray. And that's what we're doing this morning. We're coming before his throne in humility, but also in boldness. In humility, but also in gratitude. In great thankfulness. In neediness, but in faith. Because he is our provider, Jehovah Jireh, the Bible calls him. Heavenly Father, we come to you now, Father, us, this motley group of friends, 
who are in love with you, Jesus. We love you. We come humbly, but we come joyfully before your throne to spend time with you, to to bask in your presence, to abide in you, to enjoy you, Lord, not to grovel, not to grovel, Lord, not to act like guilty peasants coming to the judge. No, you have called us the bride, your bride. You have called us your friends. Oh, you welcome us with open arms. And we come to you, Lord, now. We come to those open arms. We run into those open arms, Lord, to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. Lord, we do individually and corporately representing America turn from our wicked ways. Individually, Lord, from our pride and greed and idolatry, lust and envy, but also as ambassadors of America, Lord God. We repent for the sins in this land, Lord, the sins of prostitution, the sins of abortion, the sins of uh, sexual iniquity, Lord God, the sins of envy, the sins of pride, the sins of greed. Oh God, Lord, forgive our land. Please, God, forgive America and allow us as a nation, to experience your mercy. Oh, Lord, open the windows of heaven and pour out your spirit. Lord, as we cannot see this wind, but we will feel its effects. We will hear about it. Oh, Lord, let the wind of revival begin to blow across this land. Lord, it could even start right down here in Orlando. As the tail would wag the dog, Father, would you blow across this land, Father, from corner to corner, filling every gap, filling every village, every small town, Lord, reaching to everyone with revival, God. Lord, raise up preachers to to share the good news and allow people to come home to you, Lord God, by the millions. Thank you, God. Lord, we know you hear our prayers, and we know that these prayers do not fall on deaf ears at all, not in the least. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for forgiving our sin. And because of your work, because you have forgiven us, we stand before you righteous. It's crazy. I mean, fully righteous. So much so that when Paul addressed the church, when he wrote Ephesians, Philippians, the different churches, he addressed them saints in Philippi. Yeah, there are those canonized, amazing people. But we're all saints because we stand in you sinless. Not that we don't sin. We do. We definitely do. But those sins have been washed in the blood of the Lamb if you are his child. You stand before him perfectly righteous. <laughs> it's amazing. But there's no need to feel condemnation. Condemnation comes from, from hell, from the enemy. You are not accused anymore in heaven. And that amazing love draws us into his holiness. The Bible says he's making perfect those he's made perfect. I don't know, understand it totally. But there's an imputed, a a gifted righteousness that we stand in even as he makes us day by day, week by week, month by month, and year by year more like him. Hallelujah. Oh, I just love it. I love it. Lord, we cry out to you on behalf of President Trump. I almost said Bush. (laughs) Him too. Lord, we cry out to you on behalf of the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Trump. Dear God, strengthen him, encourage him, empower him. Lord, allow him to stay humble before you. Lord, allow him to surrender his life afresh and anew to you. If he never has or if he has already, let him do it every day, Father. Let him come to you. Oh, let him cry out to you for help, Lord. 
so many millions of people, I believe many millions of people are praying for him right now in this season, Lord, when he's in the fight of his life against, uh, from what we understand, a worldwide enemy, including many in this own, his own country. Help him, Lord. Help him, Lord, to be victorious, that America could be restored to her greatness, Lord, that America could indeed be restored to those beautiful values of the Bible. Lord, hallelujah. Oh, God, with, with a godly president, Lord, may, may Donald Trump become filled with the Spirit himself, Lord God, and may his second term, if you should choose to grant him that, may his second term be so amazing, so so amazing that it would make the first term look like a warm-up act. Thank you, God. May he accomplish all that you have put in his heart to accomplish. Lord God, we pray for his family. Give them stamina. Give them encouragement. Give them grace. Give them mercy. Lord, give them yourself. Oh, cause each and every one of the sons and daughters-in-law, daughters and sons-in-law, to bow before you and accept you as their Savior. Thank you, God. And we pray for the president's cabinet. Lord, I'm thinking of Ben Carson this morning for some reason. Lord, strengthen him, encourage him, bless him, bless his family, Lord God, and bless the work of his hands, Father. And Lord, bless our senators and congressmen nationwide, Father, on both sides of the political aisle. And when I say bless, Lord, I mean, if they need you, may they humble themselves and cry out to you and pray and find you. If they already have you, God, would they be strengthened in their relationship with you? Everyone needs you. It's really all about you. Thank you, God. We live our lives. We do our jobs. We work our work. But ultimately, you said, Jesus, seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. And that that beautiful chapter in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, oh, I can't recommend it highly enough. It teaches us that you will care and provide for us no matter what. Oh, God, the birds of the trees, you feed them. The grass of the field, Lord, you feed it. You clothe it. And if you do it for them, how much more will you do it for us? Thank you, Lord. And lastly, God, we pray for this election, this presidential and Congress and senatorial election in the United States. Father, there are so many accusations, and, and I've seen a lot of the what people say is, is evidence of uh, mischievous um, cheating, In the election, God, if that is true, and if that is what's prevented President Trump from clearly being declared as the winner of the presidential election, Lord, would you expose it? Would you expose it, Father God? Lord, you say, do not participate in the fruitless deeds of darkness, but expose it. So, Lord, with one voice, we cry out to you, expose, expose, expose all Um, heinous activities regarding the election of Congress, the Senate, and the President in Jesus' name. And Lord, those who have evil intent, would you bring them to justice, God? But then would you have mercy on them and bring them to yourself, Lord? We want no one to die without you, Christ. Lord, I'd rather be in prison with you than anywhere without you. Hallelujah. You are my rock and my Savior. I love you so much, Jesus. And we are all, we're all on this call falling more in love with you every day. You're a great, great friend of ours. You're you're tender and kind and so gentle and forgiving and loving, merciful. Mm. You give grace to the humble. Thank you for that, God. And Lord, now we pray for our friends who are sick. 
Dear God, would you heal them? Oh, Lord, my dear friend, Andy Jesse, that is has served my own church, Metro Life Church, faithfully for 20 plus years. Lord, now retiring, but battling cancer, God. Would you please heal him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet? Oh, Lord God, let him be completely restored. I just love you, Jesus. And his son is um, assigned to become the pastor of our church. What a, what a joyful reality it was announced last night um, <clears throat> at a church family meeting. Lord God, I lift up my dear, dear friend, Joel, and I pray, God, that you will continue to restore him, continue to strengthen him, Father. I pray that you would give him back his former vitality, that he would be 100% restored, God, that every bit of sickness would be completely banished from his life. Heal Joel in the name of Jesus. Joel, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray the same for Karen on this call. Lord, help her. Heal her, Father. Give her complete victory. And I just thank you, Father, that you are in love with Karen, that you love her, and that you uh, are doing your very best for her. And I just thank you for that, Lord. You are her portion. You are everything that she needs. Lord, I pray for Diane, our friend, Diane friend, <laughs> that, that you would completely heal her, Lord God. Deliver her, Father. In her weakness, may she become strong. Lord, completely remove every bit of sickness from her body. And dear friend, whoever is on your heart, may they be healed <clears throat> in the precious and priceless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for praying for me yesterday. My event went well. <clears throat> I have another one tomorrow. And so if you'd keep me in prayer again, that would mean the world to me. Um, I will be coming to you from Jacksonville tomorrow morning. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun. I, uh, I just love you so much. And I appreciate this time that we have together. I wish it was longer. But this is the appointed time that God gave me. 14 minutes at 7. So that you guys can get on about your day. But please do share this program with those that are in your tribe so that they can join us because healthy things grow and we want this audience to grow as well. And join me at 5 for the John Morgan Show, humor, uh, passion, and perspective. Perspective. Don't we need perspective in this crazy world? We need to be reminded that God is in control. We need to be reminded that he answers prayer. And that's what we do in the afternoons at 5 o'clock. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. I, I've been busy chatting, and I haven't been really reading the comments, but I'm going to go back and read them now. And I'm so grateful. Mark, you're, you're, you're a dear friend. I love you on the show. Thank you so much. Yes, an ambassador of Christ, and you too, my brother. We are all witnesses of the things that he's done. We are witnesses of the mighty power and the gentle love of our Savior. Hallelujah. God bless you, and God bless the United States. Mm. Love good coffee of America. You're welcome, Karen. God bless you, my friend. It's a blast. It is a joy. Bye-bye, everybody.